everybody. Welcome back to the channel. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, we're still celebrating Oktoberfest. And in order to do that, we are going to need to make some pretzels. Bavarian style pretzels. One of the things that uh, we really, really miss in Germany, every German baker makes pretzels. Uh, you can find them on tables at restaurants. If you don't want to pay for them, don't eat them. They put them there. But if you eat them, they charge you. I eat them because they're good. But uh, we're going to show you how to make uh, German style pretzels at the house. Uh, much better than any frozen product that you could buy. Um, if you have a German bakery near you, congratulations. Hopefully they make good pretzels if they make them at all. But it's a really quite simple. So what we're going to need. Cam's going to walk you through this recipe step by step right now with all the measurements. But if you don't want to write this down, we do have it listed on our recently launched website, flour, eggs, yeast. Dot com. Enjoy. Water. I'm going to use Aquapana bottled spring water. You can use whatever water you have. Bread flour, unbleached bread flour. King Arthur, a couple bucks more, worth it. Butter, chilled, unsalted. Instant yeast. I have platinum yeast here. Use what you have. Baking soda. We'll show you why. Two different types of salt. This one is for the dough. This one is for the finished product. Every good pretzel has salt on top. You can also use sesame seeds if you're into that type of thing. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be super simple and uh, you're going to really be impressed with these results. I also recommend a mixer. We're going to use KitchenAid Paddle with the paddle attachment on it and a food scale. I'm gonna mostly do this by weight so that we know that the dough is accurate. I'll also translate it into you know cups and teaspoons and you'll kind of have to adjust as you go along. But food scale, paddle attachment for our KitchenAid, gonna be easy, let's do it. We have 500 grams of unbleached King Arthur bread flour. That's about three and one quarter cups. We also have our unsalted butter, uh, which has been chilled and cut into quarter inch pieces. Uh, pretty much what I'm going to do is turn this mixer on to two and uh, slowly add the butter in until it mixes. Um, it'll get really coarse, like a, almost like a cornmeal. And then we'll get ready to get the water in. Be sure to hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you can join Cam on these items next Wednesday. So it's looking good there. What we'll do now is um, turn the mixer back on to two and we'll add the water in. And then uh, we'll also begin to incorporate slowly sprinkling in the yeast and the salt. Uh, yeast first and then salt last. Right. So you can see what's happening there. That, that's a great sign that we should switch over to the dough hook. We had added in the, the five grams of uh, instant yeast. That's about a teaspoon um, if you're using regular measurements or U, U, uh, U.S. measurements. So clear this off here real quick. And uh, we also had the 15 grams of sea salt, which is about two and a quarter teaspoons again for, uh, for U.S. measurements. Let's go ahead and take this off. Get our dough back in there. Could already feel, I could already feel that it's perfectly hydrated. Our dough hook here. Lock it in. Now we're gonna turn the speed up a little bit. We're gonna set it at four and we're gonna let this go for eight to 10 minutes. So we'll, we'll check on it as we go, but uh, here we are.
Look at that. Perfect. Can you see that? Kind of springs back a little bit. So unplug our mixer for safety. What we're gonna do now is I got a bowl. It's lightly oiled, you can't really see it. Any type of oil will work. And uh, we're gonna ball up this dough, cover this and leave it at room temperature for, for about 45 minutes to an hour um, to let the dough ferment. Kind of take it and tuck it underneath there and then turn it. It should look something like that at the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just kind of pinch it together. There we go. Nice and smooth. Put that in there. Now we cover it and we wait. Patience. Okay guys, it's been about an hour. Let's see what we have. Oh, it's looking really good. It's exactly what we're looking for. We're gonna put, we're gonna put this out on our unfloured countertop. I lightly oiled a sheet pan. We'll put that there. What we're gonna do is just pat this into a rough, a rough triangle so that we can cut it into eight equal parts. If you want to weigh these out, it's going to be about 108 grams a slice. But we don't have to be that perfect with it. Again, we're just going to get it close. You could use a, a chef's knife if you have one. This is a bench scraper. Don't worry that it's getting a little bit out of shape because this is actually going to help us when we shape our pretzels. Now we could ball these up, but I'm just going to leave them somewhat like this because we're going to shape them very similar to tie them, tie them up. Now what we're going to do is cover them again, get them drying out. Okay, these have been resting for about five minutes. We're going to Uncover them or grab one of these out. It's pretty good. Now we're going to roll this on the countertop until it's about 18 inches long. So I have a tape measure here to kind of help me out. Now we're going to go ahead and overlap the ends inward to form a loop. Maybe we should move this out of the way. Got that there. Then we're going to flip the bottom end over the top to form an intersect. We're going to keep those twisted ends up. And we're going to lay them over just like that. See that? That's, that's our pretzel. Not too bad. Then we're going to put this back on the tray. Rinse and repeat for as many pretzels as, uh, as we'd like to make. If you don't want to make pretzels physically because the shapes are you know, hard to do or uh, you don't, you're, you're looking, oh, you know what? You could do pretzel buns, right? Hamburger buns. We could make pretzel um, hot dog buns, pretzel bread in general, whatever you want to do with it. It's pretty wide open. Uh, most people think about pretzels because they're twisted into a cool little shape. But at the end of the day, the dough is exactly the same. And if you want to turn it into hamburg pretzel hamburger buns, uh, that's probably a pretty cool thing to do. Or, um, you know, if you are going to make bratwurst or something like that, it would also be nice to have some uh, pretzel buns for, for the sausage. But uh, any way you want to consume this and shape it, you're completely free to do it make pretzels, you can probably get about eight large pretzels out of this recipe um, or an assorted amount of uh, buns of the size of your shape. All right, guys. So there you have a couple of different sizes of pretzels. You can make any shapes you like. Make sure you cover this with plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for between two and 24 hours. Uh, the colder temperature will slow down the fermentation so that your pretzels don't puff up too much. But... Um, 
make it easier to put it into the water so that we could boil it and bake it. So uh, we're gonna start prepping our next steps here. We have this um, eight quart pot because we're gonna need to boil about four quarts of water and we're gonna slowly add in some of the baking soda, which can be pretty cool because the, the water's gonna get kind of crazy every time you scoop it in there. So I don't know um, if you did a volcano as a project when you were a kid. This won't be quite as dramatic as a science fair project, but it's still pretty cool and slightly dangerous. So uh, we're gonna add that uh, baking soda in pretty slow, but we're gonna get this guy filled up here in a bit in preparation for our two hour mark uh, when they should be nice and firmed up and ready to drop in. So we got the water going here uh, in preparation for the pretzel. Now this water is very shy. It's a known fact that if you watch it, it's gonna take longer to boil. So uh, go ahead and go about your business until it starts uh, boiling. And then we're gonna add in that uh, baking soda. Okay, so we're going to spoon in some of that baking soda. Very slowly, do you see what's happening there? Now we're gonna lower our heat down just a little bit so it's a simmer. And in with the first pretzel. You see how it hit the ground that it starts coming back up? Now we can add in an, another pretzel, but I'm just gonna put in this little test pad. Same thing, wait for it to rise back up. Now we're gonna leave these in about 20 seconds a piece before we turn them over in the pretzel form. See, it's slightly, uh, slightly puffing up there, which is nice. Okay. Flip it over. And we're pretty much gonna scoop this out, drain it off, get it right back, get it right back onto the pan. And then we're gonna rinse and repeat for uh, all of the pretzels and the buns that we have made. Make sure they're drained really well. We're going to get them on the tray. Then we're going to add our salt or sesame seeds. Add as much or as little salt as you like. Because you can always put some on afterwards as well. But I like to bake it on with it. So we're going to get these in the oven at 350 for 35 minutes. So it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Baking stone in, optional. Put that right in there. 30 to 35 minutes, we'll see you guys soon. 35 minutes. Whoa, look at that. Oh, it smells great. That is one beautiful homemade pretzel. And then we have a couple of these looking uh, equally as enticing. And you can see what happens here with this guy. If you create like a little bun, you could slice this in half. Um, I didn't really make this one large enough. What we're going to do now is take these off the tray, get them on a cooling rack, and in about 10 minutes, I'm going to start stuffing them down my face. Look at what we have going on here. Now, if you want, now would be a good time to melt some butter on top of these hot pretzels. But uh, we're going to taste them without the butter first. And then, uh, of course, we'll have mustard and everything else. Uh, maybe now would be a good time to find a beer if you're a beer drinker, German Marzen's extremely uh, good pair with pretzels, schnitzel, and, and everything else. All right, guys, we got uh, our cooling rack and pumpkin. Now's a great time to subscribe to the channel, but look at what we got here. Look at that pretzel. So easy to do. I'm gonna share this one, so we're gonna put this in the back for a second. 
And we're gonna taste a, a, a mini one so we don't fill up. But let's give it a... Wow. Well, it just smells like an Oktoberfest booth. Mmm. Perfect amount of salt, nice and crunchy, soft on the inside. Look at that. So airy and buttery. This is a perfect pretzel. Now that I know how to do this, I'm gonna be having pretzels all the time. Pizza, pretzels, beer, goes great with both. Mmm. Wow. Guys, you, you need to follow this recipe and do this. You are gonna be shocked. These are, of course, best um, eaten warm, right? 10 minutes out, let it cool. That's gonna be your, your optimum. You, once these cool, you can store them in uh, Ziploc bags. For two days, they'll stay soft and moist. Uh, if you put them in a paper bag, they'll get uh, more hard and crusty like a Pennsylvania Dutch pretzel, if you've ever had those. Uh, from the store, they're outstanding as well. Great snacks. But uh, this is a smashing success. And uh, I can't wait to uh, start on my currywurst and uh, a couple of other uh, Oktoberfest uh, treats. You know, just uh, German food for October. It's going be, gonna to be a good month. So thank you for stopping by. Uh, please, uh, again, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I hope we earned it today. And if not, I'm going to eat the pretzel, so I win either way. So have a good one, and we'll see you next time.